Welcome everyone to our Franks Finest for Section 1A Football, where we select the top preseason players for each class in Section 1 in the Hudson Valley Football League. Um, I'd like to welcome you guys all to the show. We appreciate you guys as always. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that thumbs up and sub to our YouTube channel for our content videos. And consider joining our Patreon for some added coverage and benefits. It also really helps support the group. Now let's dive into the content here. We're going to be selecting our top players. I also want to address that we're going to be having an interview with one of our Franks Finest at towards the end of the this video which I'm really excited for you guys to see talking some football talking about the player itself so definitely tune in there we also want to address on how we select these players so some of the biggest components that we use when selecting a player which is about 11 to 13 players on each side of the ball depending on how many ties we have we want to come to a consensus so if two kids are tied We'll add both of them. The big thing, the number one thing we look for is film, the eye in the sky. Um, the second thing is coaches' feedback. Um, is it really important to us? And finally, stats. So stats are not as high up as film and coaches, but we still use it. Numbers are still important to us, um, and we'll address that. Uh, you'll see here some numbers from us as well. Let's dive into it. And first off, the first position is the quarterback spot. Really important. We all know um, a lot of people anticipate which quarterback is going to be selected. And in this year, um, there's no different. But we did come to a consensus on this one, and that is quarterback Caden Gonzalez, the senior of Yorktown. He is our Frank's finest quarterback this year at 6'2", 175 pounds, had over 1,500 passing yards, 59% completion percentage, 23 touchdowns. He also rushed for a couple touchdowns as well. And this is a big basketball player, right? And you can see he's the orchestrator on the basketball court and orchestrator here in Yorktown's offense. And I really think he's improved with his decision making, his ability to maneuver the pocket and throwing with touch and anticipation. He always had that talent, but now you're starting to see things pull together last year and you saw record-breaking numbers and he absolutely deserved this spot on the list. Next up running back Mason Kelly the senior from Somers. Six foot 185 pounds. He was first team all state last year. He had over 1300 yards and 23 touchdowns a season ago. Tremendous year and he is versatile. I love that he you know he started off as being and he still is good with counters outside zone being a receiver but he really improved on downhill runs running with physicality. You can see him putting it all together to be a well-rounded back. Also pretty damn solid in pass pro an underrated aspect for a running back. He can contribute multiple ways. This is a big lax player. I think he committed to Brown University, so you see very talented athlete. He deserves a spot on this list. Next up on the list, running back Sean Claremont, the senior from Nyack. 5'9", 195 pounds. He also got some All-State honors, over a thousand yards uh, last year. Another well-rounded back. He is physically built, chiseled. Um, but I tell you what, he runs with some serious power and burst. He can run through contact. He's got a powerful stiff arm and he shows that he can do a, a couple different types of runs. He really excels at kind of those off tackles or counters and powers, but he has that burst. He hits that second level he could lead to a very very big play um, so a very well-rounded back powerful back he earned a spot on this list next on the list running back Chris Giuliano the senior from Rye this young man 6'2 175 pounds Another big lack, multi-sport athlete. He committed to Notre Dame. And I tell you, one of probably the biggest breakthrough stars from last year who wasn't well known across Section 1 and really was a secret sauce of Rise success last year. We had a strong passing attack and they were looking for a strong running attack to balance that. And this young man really helped provide that. He's got really good patience, good vision, sets up his blockers well. And you can see his good feet uh, when he's running the football. He, he maneuvers in and out of tight spaces very well. Next up on the list, let's talk about a wide receiver. Dean Palazzolo, the junior from Somers. 5'9", 165 pounds. Not a very big guy, but he is explosive and electric. I mean, this is a guy who can hit that extra gear very quickly. Very difficult to cover man-to-man. -man. And he was a nightmare for teams um, whenever they went to man coverage uh, against him. And he can line up in the slot. He can line up out wide. Now, a lot of success in the slot. But he can take those quick bubbles, those quick slants, and take it the distance. So, huge player when it came to those go routes, quick, uh, those quick hitters, and he can make people miss in space. Um, he was very impressive, but what a surprise for me, not being such a big guy, was his body control, his ability to catch with contact, his ability to catch near the sideline. Not easy to do, and he showed he's a plus player in multiple facets as a wide receiver. Next up on the list, let's talk about wide receiver Jake Teetle, the senior from Clarkstown South. Big body kid, 6'3", 215 pounds. Um, he had seven touchdowns last year, over 500 yards. Um, and this is a guy, again, he's not gonna blow you away with a 40, but he has a large catch radius, um, really can go up and catch the football and he shows he's got really nice soft hands lines up at the outside but can also line up in the slot and help you on the inside game as well so another versatile receiver big body target 
going to be huge in the red zone. Um, this is a young man who earned the spot. Next up, I want to call him an athlete. He's a running back and wide receiver, Joe Krupe, the senior from Harrison. Six foot, 170 pounds, over a thousand total yards, 11 touchdowns. He is a Swiss Army knife on the offense. You can put him in the backfield and run, and he can make plays at both spots. Uh, he really hurt defenses uh, throughout the year, and also as a returner. Look at the Section 1 title game against Somers. A couple returns for touchdowns as well. This is a guy who can change games and every phase of the game. And I love his balance. This is a guy who is deceptively fast. He's not slow without question, but when he gets the ball in his hands, it seems to just constantly break away from people. And I love his balance through contact. He's definitely earned a spot on this list. Let's round off the skill position with tight end Jake Kesner, the senior from Rye. This one was an obvious one. 6'4", 235 pounds. He had over 700 yards receiving and six touchdowns. He's committed to Princeton football. Probably one of the best prospects in section one. He lines up as an inline tight end, but he can also line up as an H-back, can line up as a wide receiver, um, and do a lot of things for you. And what I love is that he is a positive player as both a receiver and a blocker. He's another guy who pretty much can add as, a, as an extension to the offensive line, open up holes for you, down blocking on some of the DNs, getting to the linebacker, getting to the secondary in the second level. Um, and I love that he has this large catch radius, good body control, soft hands. This is a very well-rounded tight end, one of the best players in section one. Now let's go to the big guys up front. Such an important group for any team um, is their offensive line. And, and first up, offensive lineman Luke Johnson, the senior from Brewster. 6'3", 255 pounds. This guy's a lacrosse player. I think he's a goalie. Um, so you can see some of the nimble feet get, uh, going into multiple sports. And he's a lone returning starter on Brewster. This is a big boy who can move his feet. He really does move defenders at the point of attack using his size, using his strength, um, constantly, again, not leaning. He drives his feet. Once he gets his hands locked in, I was really impressed with what I saw and the potential that this young man has here in the spot on this list. Next up, offensive lineman Ben Harris, the senior from Somers. 6'2", 220 pounds. Uh, again, another lone return. This is a senior, was a senior heavy offensive line last year, and this is one of the underclassmen who did stand out on tape who's returning back this year on a dominant front for Somers. And this is another guy with solid size to him. A bit raw. This is a guy you saw that can really move people to point attack and show his ability to pull. Um, so I was very impressed with him getting to that second level. Now becomes the anchor uh, for this Somers offensive line. And he definitely earned a spot on this list. Next up on this list, offensive lineman Mike Desiderio, the junior from Yorktown. And this young man, not very tall, right? 5'10", 205 pounds. This is a lax kid, multi-sport guy, but he is feisty. I mean, a good example of an undersized uh, player but plays with really good leverage and really drives people and drives his feet gets underneath you and you really start to see him move some of the bigger guys um, again playing the center spot is very difficult but he held his own and this was another senior heavy Yorktown team last year he's one of those linemen returning um, that was really strong up front for them and he was a big part of it. another lineman from Yorktown let's talk about Dennis Mitchell the senior 6'2 265 pounds coach raves about he's a quiet hard-working technically sound guy and that's what you see on tape. I mean, this is a, he's a steady player and I love that versatility. Reps at guard, reps at tackle. He's got really solid hand placement. And when he moves his feet and that hand placement inside, he really controls defenders and is another guy who can take that next step this year. And he earned a spot on this year's list. Finally, to wrap it all off, let's talk about offensive guard and offensive tackle. Another versatile lineman, Patrick McGuire, the senior from Rye. 6'4", 240 pounds. And again, multi-sport guy. I think he played basketball, football, and rugby. Um, and this is a strong kid that is raw but the tools are there and he has some really impressive reps as the seasons go along one of the returning starters on that offensive line um, for Rye who re you know again who really pops off on tape as one of those underclassmen coming back obviously has to anchor this offensive line now with so many of his starters uh, leaving from last year but this is a man who has the tools that he could do that and he earned a spot on this list let's move to defense and let's talk about the guys um, up front defensive line we'll talk about the linebackers and I want to start with defensive end Nicholas Ferrante the senior from Lakeland who earned a spot on this list. 49 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, 6 sack. Had an impressive productive year last year and when you watch him on tape, he's not a very big guy but he was very productive. He always found his way to the ball, very disruptive as a pass rusher and I tell you what, he, he uses his hands very well, he uses his leverage very well, does a good job of defending the sweep, good job of rushing the pass. Like I mentioned, he can go out towards the outside, can make a move towards the inside. Not a very big guy but he did do a solid job in the run game and he earned a spot on this list. Next up, defensive tackle. Landon Varley, the senior from Mayapak, six feet, 235 pounds, had a, over 60 tackles as a defensive tackle, is very impressive. He also had four and a half sacks. Very quick first step. 
He plays with a lot of power. Um, so he really overwhelms some of the smaller defensive linemen. And that quick step against some of the bigger guys, he can beat towards the inside. He's made some plays at the point of attack, just winning with that first step. Um, and this is probably one of the more impressive defensive tackles, and he earned a spot on this list. The next one was an easy one. Defensive tackle Arden Belie Damage, the senior from Harrison. Um, this young man, 6'4", 250 pounds, huge potential. And I tell you what, a monster up front when you watch him on tape. Strong hands that really control offensive linemen, and he uses it to disengage at ease. And this Harrison defense last year was a top three defense in the class and he was a huge part of it because Harrison overall wasn't big um, outside of Arden and you know you needed someone to anchor down they had a lot of speed and so you need some of those big guys who can anchor down up the middle and he was a huge part of that um, and I really love that he improved as a pass rusher he got more explosive he really was a dynamic defensive tackle this one was an easy selection he's on this list next up let's talk about outside linebacker slash edge player Connor Bierfeld um, the senior from Nyack 6'2 180 pounds put up crazy numbers he had 58 tackles, 11 sacks. This is a big lax kid. And I tell you, he's tall, long, went on a bunch of outside stunts where they're sending him off the edge, and he really delivered. He finished. Um, he also does a really good job of keeping things inside on some sweeps and attacking from the backside. He uses athleticism very well. And because he's long, it's hard to get into his body at times. So this was a very impressive young man. Um, backs, tight ends, really struggled blocking him. Um, there, there, there's no doubt of that on tape. Next up on this list, let's talk about linebacker Vin Chiafone, the senior from Eastchester. And and this is a four-year varsity player. Such a steady force, and I think he's pretty underrated. He's a very versatile linebacker, one of the smoother athletes at the linebacker spot. Does a good job maneuvering through tight spaces, getting through blockers to the ball carrier in the run game, and the ability to drop into zone coverage and make plays in the passing game is without doubt one of the bigger things that he does. I'm a well-rounded linebacker. Also plays running back. He's going to play a bigger role in that one, but this was another easy selection on this list. Next up, let's talk about linebacker Marco Marisi, the junior from Harrison. Tools are impressive. 6'2", 210 pounds. He had over 45 tackles last year. Um, INT, fumble recoveries, forced fumbles. He seems to be making plays for this defense. And again, solid speed, physical linebacker can really bang around inside the tackle box, get through blockers. And I, those are huge parts to me. You can finish tackles on a consistent basis and, and fight through blockers through your gap to the ball carrier. And he did a really solid job of that. Coach raves about his potential at the linebacker spot. And he showed really good work on, on last year's tape here in the spot on this list. Next up, let's talk about linebacker Andrew Wilmarth, the senior from Rye. 6'2", 225 pounds. He had over 60 tackles and four interceptions. Three sport athlete, all conference. Really strong year last year. I mean, he's well-rounded on pass defense. He did a really good job of reading quarterback's eyes, dropping, getting depth, um, and, and getting himself into the passing lane where he made a bunch of plays, but also a really strong tackler, a strong finisher. So he lines up really close to the line of scrimmage. So I, I, again, he's, he's not, you know, usually guys have it at five yards and then they're they're moving forward he likes to stand close to the line of scrimmage and just go and he did a really solid job in that ride defense of doing that let's go into the secondary now guys and first one up defensive back Sion Barry the senior from Clarkstown North 5'11 175 pounds well-rounded year last year 57 tackles three INTs also a sack um, and fumble recovery and this is a three-year varsity player um, I think he's a well-rounded safety. He's not afraid to get involved in the run game. He's a plus tackler. And in the pass game, you know, he he showed some solid range to him to make some plays um, on passes over the middle and, and towards the numbers. So this is an, a well-rounded safety earning a spot on this list. Next up, safety Dante Lanza, the senior from Harrison. One of my favorite kids that I watched last season. Uh, not a very big guy. He's about 5'8", um, but he had multiple INTs. He's one of my players to watch coming up because he really is a Swiss Army knife on defense and offense for this team. Scrappy as hell. I mean, he's always around the ball. It seems like he always makes a big play in big moments. He had two interceptions versus Somers in the title game. He's very reliable. He can play in the box, even though he's not big, but he tackles very well in space, in the box and run support, and also plays deep at times where he can make moves on the ball. I love that he can play some man in the slot. Lot, some zone coverage, well-rounded guy, uh, love the scrappiness from him. Another guy I really like, defensive back Archer Fenton, the senior from Rye. Again, not very big guy, right? I think he's like 5'8". Another super active safety. Uh, this guy over 45 tackles, four pass breakups, had an INT. He is quick, he's athletic, strong in the open field, tackling uh, wide receivers and running backs. And I love the toughness that he brings. I mean, 
He also is another guy you can play him in the box, acts like an additional linebacker, but also you drop him into coverage, right? As a high safety, and he can make some plays for you. I love versatile players, and this is another one to me that can do multiple things. Um, and he definitely earned a spot on this list. Next up, let's talk about another safety, Declan Connors, the senior from Fox Lane. 5'10, 160 pounds, three year starter, and an important two way player for Fox Lane. And as a strong safety, I thought he really stepped up last year and made a lot of big plays for this defense, um, which was a pretty strong defense. And and I tell you, he's a plus tackler in space. And I love some of the reps I saw on man coverage and in zone coverage. He really performed last year and he earned a spot on this list. Finally, to wrap it all off, let's talk about another defensive back, Miguel Iglesias, the senior from Somers. And I know he's playing quarterback. I don't know how much he's playing of defensive back, but this is a uh, big time athlete, the cross commit to Notre Dame. He had, I think, four interceptions last year. And I tell you what, wherever you put him at, he seemed to make plays on the offensive side and on the defensive side where you move him around. He can do a lot of things for you and on the defensive side in the back end he was really impressive and really it felt like he his play got even better as they made their run to the state title so when you can play big in big moments you can earn spots like this and he earned that spot um, on this list and finally to wrap it all off let's talk about our special teams player and that is uh kyle pinto the senior from mayapak does kicking punting uh hit all his pats last year four field goals hit including one close to 40 yards um six touchbacks he also about average around 35 yards punting a very well-rounded consistent special teams player he earns a spot on this list all right that was the list guys now let's talk about the interview and we have one of our frank's finest joining us uh, for this interview i want you guys to check it out joining us now he is the tight end and linebacker for rye high school football we want to welcome to the show jake kesner how's it going jake it's great. Thank you for having me. And we really appreciate it. Congratulations on being a Frank's finest selection uh, this year. Um, you know, everyone in the area kind of is starting to get to know your name more with as big of a prospect as you've been and how successful Rye has been the last couple of years and you being a big part of that. But before we kind of dive into um, some Rye stuff, I want to ask you personally, um, when did you start football and who got you into football? Uh, so I started playing tackle football um, seventh grade during modified and I uh, uh, started playing flag probably when I was around eight years old. Um, I got to give up all the credit to my dad because he loves football just as much as I do. Yeah, 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 that's great. And, and you know, I'll follow up to that, you know, I feels like I played football a long time ago at this point, but coached it. My dad was a longtime coach in section one, and he would ask this question to players. Uh, I'm always curious to hear uh, your answer to this, and that is, what does football mean to you? Uh, you know, like you mentioned your dad's love for it, but for you personally, um, you know, why do you play? You know, is it because of your love for it as well, because your friends played it? Give me your side of, you know, what does football mean for you? Um, so for me, football, what I love most about football is just kind of the brotherhood that it brings. Um, you know, the team dinners, the Friday night light game, was um, Phil on Saturday mornings. I kind of love going through all of that with like my teammates who I consider family. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. Um, now, obviously you, you committed to Princeton football, that's correct? Yeah. And, and that is a tremendous accomplishment. Um, big time football there. And the question I wanted to ask you, you know, you, we're going to have some players that are, are still trying to be recruited, parents that are helping their kids, and some younger athletes that one day would want to be recruited. And so I wanted to ask you from your perspective, as a player's perspective, what are some of the biggest things going through this recruiting process that you've learned that you think would be valuable for future athletes to know? Uh, yeah, so definitely the biggest thing I would say is just stay consistent um, with posting your highlights and just everything that's going on in your life. Uh, Twitter is a big platform for recruiting, uh, so I'd definitely say that. And then um, I would just say during the summer, go to as many camps as you can go to because coaches aren't going to be coming to your high school games. you got to go out and go in front of them. Hmm. Finally, I do have a question. I know, you know, section one holds this media day and you're gonna be asked about Rye returning back to A, I can imagine, and, yeah. and, you know, rekindling some of these rivalries, one with Somers and one with Harrison. And I know you guys played Harrison last year, and, but I wanted to ask you about the game. And not so much on, you know, what your prediction is this, this year, but I wanted to ask you, cause you know, a long time ago, I w when I went to high school, which was at Mayapak, there was a long time rivalry with Carmel. 
um, and, and that was always a, a very intense week um, in the entire community, right? Everything was on pins yeah. and needles. And so I want to ask you, you know, as someone who's in that game, the Harrison Rye game, what is it, what is the environment like both before the game, during the week, and obviously at the game? You know, there's a lot of hype that goes around, a lot of talk, but what is it like in the trenches for you? Uh, yeah, so it's definitely very, we treat it kind of differently than every other week. Um, so our practices are longer, harder, um, and the whole community kind of just gets behind our back. So like the night before the game, we um, started off with dinner at the firehouse. Uh, the firefighters cook for us, which is awesome. Um, we're always super grateful for that. And then um, we end up going to uh, Nugent Stadium uh, and we do a bonfire there for the whole school. So it's a pretty awesome and uh, surreal experience to be part of. That's great. All right, now let's let's talk about a couple plays, you know. And and I watched quite a bit of film um, on you and and obviously a bunch of players. But let me just do you see my screen right now? Uh, yeah, I see it. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna run through some plays, and then I'm gonna get your perspective on some of the things, you know, some of the reads, some things that might be, you know, some people watching you might not be that familiar with football, and it'd be a good learning experience. So I see you're highlighted here, and this we'll let the play go first, so you can see what play I'm talking about. This is you as the tight end spot, and an absolutely ridiculous catch here for a touchdown. And when I go back, let, let me just ask you, what is, you know, what is your role in this play? What landmarks are you looking for? Now, this people call it a corner route, but you got the front pylon and the back pylon, the in-between. Can you describe on kind of what your steps are as this play progresses? Uh, yeah, so um, as you can see, there's an uh, outside backer head off on me. So I, just needed, I knew I needed to get an outside release on this. Um, and then once I got that outside release, I kind of saw a lot of blue in the end zone and the uh, safety was kind of trailing on my back. So I cut it a little bit short so he couldn't really catch up. And AJ just placed an incredible ball um, that I was able to grab for the touchdown. Absolutely. And, and, you know, going back, I just want to kind of lean back here. When you make that release and you felt the safety on your back, right, there's the initial pathway to the back corner, and they say to make it shallow when that guy, if he's over the top on you or if he's underneath you, do you keep going? Is there, like, some of those nuances in there, or is this just based, based on your connection with AJ? Uh, yeah, me and AJ have been playing together since we were – since I started playing football. He was my first ever quarterback. Um, and we kind of have that chemistry. So um, he, I just kind of went off feel and he kind of saw where I was headed and he threw a perfect ball. I mean, there's some great body control there. Great ball, great catch, two great players making great plays. You know, a lot of things, Jake, on this next play, you know, I heard in the initial when you were first coming up, you know, is Jake fast enough at the tight end spot? And so I watch this play and I'm seeing a safety on you and you're breaking away here for, for another touchdown. You know. Have you heard those, I wouldn't say criticisms, but suggestions? And what have you done to kind of work on that speed, um, obviously getting to where you are today? Uh, yeah, so um, before my sophomore year, I didn't really take football too seriously, to be completely honest. Um, and just watching my own film and hearing from coaches and everything after my sophomore year, I knew I needed to get faster. Uh, so I started, you know, just sprinting nonstop. I got a, I got a track coach, actually really um, help me with that yeah so um just trying to uh make my strides a little bit longer you know get my form down and i think it's really paid off yeah i mean without question and that's a great message there right so you heard these feedbacks and then you took the initiatives to try to fix that right yeah. so you know going to this next play and here you are as an inline tight end we've seen now a couple reps making big plays in the passing game and this is another one where you might be covered, right, as this play goes on. You'll see. You're going to drag across the middle, and you're being pretty well covered here, right? But that doesn't matter anyway because of your size, right? So yep. I, I noticed you kind of gave AJ a little, you know, finger in the air to say, I guess, throw it up to you, right? And I noticed yeah. that a lot on some of these where whether you're covered or not, you're telling them, hey, just give me an opportunity. You know, what is kind of, where does that stem from? Um, any thoughts on how you can share? And also, as this play goes on, when you're doing these drags, are you just, if you know you're in man coverage, are you just looking for open space? Are these landmarks you're looking for on the field? Give us a little bit of detail into those two things. Uh, yeah, so um, 
which when I read it, if they're sitting in a zone, I kind of just try to find a spot where I can make the catch and head up field. But if there's a man on my back, I know I could, I'm confident in my ability to kind of outrun him like I did here. And um, I'm a pretty big target. So I trust the quarterbacks. I feel like trust me enough to just kind of throw it up and trust that I'll make the grab. And then I was fortunate to get a, a nice run after catch here. Yeah, that's that strength right there, right? So even after the catch, you're looking to get those extra yards. Um, so yeah. now those those finger in the air, have you been doing that with Carson and the other quarterbacks at Rye? I know you've had a long connection with AJ. Um, what's that connection developing like on your current quarterback situation? Um, it's been great. It's, it's like we haven't missed a beat. Um, we started our first uh, preseason practice uh, yesterday on Saturday. And um, it was it was great. Uh, me and Carson have been throwing together all spring, all summer. So we already are growing that connection, and it's the same thing. Just put the finger up, hope that he throws it up, and hope that I'll make the catch. <laughs> Finally, the last play I wanted to talk about, and, and there's a lot of tight ends, right? And, and there's always, for me, when I watch tight ends in high school, they usually can do one of two things well. They can block very well, or they can be a receiver. And here's the play going on right now. There's you. And that's blocking. Now, we went through a bunch of plays of you as a receiver. But what has impressed me, and I think the most well-rounded tight ends, are ones that can do both receiving and blocking. And so my question to you is, this is you blocking down on the defensive end, usually bigger-bodied guys. And you have to win some of those one-on-one -on -one battles. What do you feel is the most important thing to be a successful blocking tight end that you might share with other players or people growing up and trying to be a tight end similar to yourself? Uh, the most important thing is without a doubt your pad level. Even on this play, my pad level wasn't great. Uh, it's something that I've been working on all off season as well. Um, but the low man wins every single time. Um, so I just think that playing with a low pad level, you should be able to win almost every one of your matchups blocking. Absolutely. And that's a great, great point. Um, that was the last question in play I wanted to go through. Uh, again, Jake, congratulations on the commitment to Princeton football, to being a Frank's Thank finest. You. Thank you for taking the time to spend with us. Any last shout outs or comments you'd like to give before we close the interview? Uh, only really shout out I have is for my teammates. Um, I wouldn't really be here without them, uh, constantly pushing me, making me better. So I'm just very fortunate for my teammates, my community, my coaches, um, and everything that's made me to the player I am today. Jake Kesner, everyone, from Rye. Thank you so much, Jake. Thank you. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. As always, I really do appreciate the support, and congratulations to all the Frank's Finest players. Until next time, this is Frank signing out.